Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a set of low custom built-in shelves in a closet like this one for under $100. Here's a closer look at the shelves. As you can see they sit about 40 inches below the clothing rod in the closet. The shelves are 18 inches deep and about 16 inches apart uh, vertically. They sit on cleats at the outer wall and on the back wall. All this is really standard on uh, residential built-ins like this in closets. So for a look at the materials here, uh, we're using half inch uh, sand apply plywood for the dividers. And then this is three quarter, full sheet of three quarter sand apply for the shelves themselves. Uh, for those face frames that you saw, I like to use this 1x2 pre-prime pre pine. This specifically comes from Home Depot. Uh, where I am, they have the best pre-primed trim boards. It's finger joint, but it looks really good and the prime's real smooth. So to begin this whole process, I take a 6-inch foam roller and uh, prime the plied boards that are just raw right now. Uh, I like foam rollers because they don't leave that much texture, not nearly as much as a, a full 3 8 nap roller or something like that. While that primer is dry, drying, I switch over to an inch and a half brush and go ahead and get a couple coats of semi-gloss paint on the trim pieces while they're all laid out like this. You can just paint it much faster uh, this way. Then leave those to dry, get a new 6 inch foam roller, and begin putting semi-gloss on the plywood boards and panels. I uh, try to do both sides. It's good to do outside so long as it's not windy and blowing a lot of stuff around. When all that's drying up, I head inside and begin laying out measurements for where the shelves are going to sit. So I want them at about 16 inches and about 32 inches. I'm sitting a half inch shy of that, even though our material is three quarters. I mark the uh, where the cleats are actually going to sit, not the shelves themselves. And then I do the same at the front of the closet and in the four corners on the other side of the closet. These are kind of reference marks. I'm only going to half use them when the time comes. But then I measure from the front of the closet to the back to figure out how long our side cleats are going to be. I take those numbers outside, transfer them onto our 1x2 stock, and make a mark with a little crow's foot, a little V. It's much easier to cut more precisely at the point of a V. I cut those on a miter saw. and. Um, I go ahead and try and do all my pieces at once in pairs. So here's a pair here. And if they're not the same size, same size for each side of the closet, go ahead and mark which go on the left and which go on the right. That way you won't get them confused. Then you can bring them in. You can line them up by eye at your marks on the wall, but I usually shoot one corner, then use a, in this case, Stanley two foot level to make sure that I'm running level across, across the side wall. Just like that, it's just a shade up from our mark and uh, go ahead and shoot into our framing in the corners there because that's where most of your framing is in a closet. And I try to get something like three or sometimes even four two inch brad nails into the corner framing, just like that. And then I'll find any studs in the middle if I can, if there are any there. Do the top one, and then I do the bottom one the exact same way. And I'm using a rigid 18 gauge brad nailer. You can tell we're good and level there at the bubble. And then I do the same thing on the other side of the closet. And then I measure between the two sets of cleats like this. I run my tape just a little bit past so I can get a sharper measurement there. Do the top and the bottom. Remember both those numbers. Go out, cut them, and bring these long pieces in. And the first thing I do is I line them up with the outer cleats and shoot them into the corner framing at the ends like this. Then I'm going to take a long straight edge, a six foot straight edge, and lay it on there because I want to make sure the thing's not sagging. So I kind of push any dip up out of it so it meets the underside of the straight edge. I'm going to shoot into the studs here. So I find one, usually just by tapping on the wall. Then I generally measure off 16 inches like this and leave a little, little tick mark with my measuring tape, as you can see right there. Uh, to know if you're on a stud, you can usually just pin one and try pulling it, and it, you'll hear a thumping sound when it really goes in and touches a stud. So again, I put two or three nails at every stud location across the closet for the upper cleat and the lower cleat, and this is what you wind up with, the full cleat perimeter. This is where a lot of our support at the outer edges of the shelves is going to come from. So now we can focus on uh, making the shelves themselves. I butt my tape to the left wall and pull all the way to the right, and you can let the tape ride across the top of the cleat just like this, kind of pushing into the corner. And as you can see, we're going to be like just shy of eight inches. Eight feet. Eight feet's a really common measurement for interior closets like this. 
And now we got to rip our plywood to the appropriate depth. In this case, 17 and a quarter. That's our 18 inch depth minus the three quarters of the face frame themselves. So I uh, go ahead and get my table saw running here. My blade's a little too high. Don't keep your blade this high over your stock, but I rip my full plywood sheets down to a couple pieces of uh, 17 and a quarter. And then I cut them to length uh, on my miter saw here. I have to flip the piece to get the full, full cut, but you can see we're just shy eight feet. Then I lower the shelf into place on the cleat and you see it barely cleared the upper shelves. I kind of got away with one here. You may want to hold off installing the upper cleat until you get the bottom shelf installed. But uh, sometimes things just work out like that. And here you can see fairly tight to the wall. That's definitely a caulkable gap. Now we're going to want a center divider here to create support. Eight feet's too big, too long a run to not have some support in the center. And uh, to figure out the height of that exactly, I usually measure out near the perimeter. It's hard on carpet. I have to push the carpet and the padding underneath down to try to figure out what's the measurement beneath that. And it's close to 15 and a half here. Um, and also we have this baseboard. I don't want to interrupt the baseboard or mess with it. I'm going to cut a notch in the back here to jump over the baseboard at this location at about five and a quarter notch and maybe three quarters deep. Even if that's a little big, it's not going to matter that much. It's not going to be too visible. And I'm going to put a second notch at the top of that lower divider to, to also jump over the cleat at the top. This isn't that hard to do. I'm using my half inch ply stock for this. You can use three quarter, but we had some half inch. Again, blade's too high. Don't keep it that high, but here's my square piece after I cut it in both directions. And this is the layout for the notch that I mentioned at the bottom there. Three quarters deep, five and a quarter tall. Um, you know, if you can make this tighter if you want to, people generally just don't care. They, they just don't want to have to interrupt the baseboard uh, to get the dividers in place. So there's my lower one. And then to mark the upper one, I just take a piece of the stock that we're, we're going to be jumping over, this one by two. Usually I'll just set it on there, bring it in just a little bit, and, uh, you know, draw score a little pencil line around it. And that lets me know pretty precisely what that notch shape is going to be. And you don't have to bring any tape measures or speed squares in, in for that one. And sometimes I cut the longer part of my notch on the table saw just because I can set it up so precisely. I'll even flip it and do the, the little part of the smaller notch just like that. And then to finish the notches off, um, I'll switch over to just coping saw, almost any kind of hand saw, run that through. And you can usually break out this little piece and do some cleanup if you got a little, little chunk of wood still in there. But that's that's the profile the back profile of the divider it's pre-painted but i want it to be stable on the floor so i'm going to add these little feet to it so i'm measuring across the true bottom of the piece getting pretty much 16 and a half inches and with some extra pine stock i'm going to rip down these little half inch cleats that are going to become feet on the bottom part of the piece just like this so like 16 and a half by half inch they're going to hide behind the face frames Take all that inside and I slide my divider into place. You can see it jumps over the baseboard. If this gap's too big for you, you can make it tighter. My client just really didn't care at all if we were going to have a gap back there. And you see it fits underneath the cleat at the top, fairly tight at the wall. That's caulkable if you want to caulk it, but it's mostly going to be out of view and hidden by stuff you're storing. The other thing I like to do is sight down the length of the board to make sure it's not bowing upwards. Again, carpet's a real problem here. It's so springy, springy. it's going to settle over time. I left the slightest camber in this thing because I thought gravity was going to push it down over time as it got weighted with objects. And then before I install it, I take it back out and check our size and spacing for our, our little feet here. Got my type on two glue and I, I put in some really short brads, maybe three quarter inch brads because I don't want them to punch all the way through both pieces. I want them to get most of the way in and stop. Load those into my rigid brad nailer and then put type on two glue on the backs of these feet. And I kind of rub it into the grain a bit with my finger just like this. Make sure I'm getting a proper spread for good adhesion here. It's not going to be a lot of force on this thing. And you can put excess glue into the place where the thing's going to sit. Then I kind of smush it down into place like this. I line it up with the bottom edge and the front edge and shoot down through it with these short brads. You can move it and adjust it a bit with your fingers just like that to make sure it's sitting down tight to the bottom. And I flip it over and do the same thing on the other side from the other direction. And you wind up with this T-shaped piece. 
And that's it. And I put that under the shelf. But first, I got to find the middle of the shelf in an eight foot closet. I'm going to put it right at 48. Doesn't matter if it's an eighth of an inch off. Uh, nobody's ever going to notice. And I marked the front to make it easier to line up by eye. Slide the piece into place, and I want it sitting square and plumb. I'm going to use my speed square and Irwin quick clamp for this. And here, I can push the divider up against the side of the speed square when it's set in place. That's going to keep me perpendicular to the front of the shelf. And I glue the top edge before I slide it in there. You can kind of lift your shelf up a little bit if you need, need to work it into place. Then I pin down with one single brad, like one and a quarter brad. Keep the thing from moving this way. Now I want to make sure the thing is truly plumb. So I take my speed square off and I flip it around, hold it to the underside of the shelf, and push the, the cheek up against the shelf and get it as vertical as I can. Now I put two inch brads in and I'm just going to shoot a couple into the floor. This is to keep the divider from kicking out if something hits it. It's unlikely that anything's going to happen to this, but I can just pin straight down through the carpet. And if you ever had to demolish this thing, you could actually just knock all this right out. It would pull right up off the floor and you wouldn't even really have any damage to the carpet. There you can see it's really sturdy. And I add a few more pins down through the shelf, carefully siding down the shelf to the top of the divider. And this is our lower shelf with the divider in place. It's looking pretty good already. Go ahead and cut my second, my upper shelf. Lower that one into place. And now we need a divider for this one too. So once again, I, I measure at the perimeter because you want a consistent height all the way across the profile of the, the piece. And I'm getting a little shorter here, something like 15 and a quarter. Cut that one, put a notch at the top. And at first, just line it up by eye with the lower divider. And I use my speed square to keep it plumbed up, just like that. And I'm actually going to put a couple feet on this one, too. I just thought it was an easier way to show for DIYers. Uh, so it's going to be a lot like the bottom one. And I actually put these feet on in place. I'm just going to push them into my glue here. Um, you don't have to do it this way. If you don't like the way these things look, you could use a 3 quarter inch divider and toe nail it from the top and bottom. Uh, I just thought this was kind of easy, consistent way to do it on this project, and my client wasn't going to be bothered by the appearance of the things. So those are shot on and shot down into the lower shelf and pinned from the upper shelf. Now we got to make the face frames. So I pull all the way across the, um, the front edge of our ply shelves, and we're going to make these one by 2 face frames. They're going to need a notch, too, so that they can jump over the cleats at the outer wall. Do the same thing here. Just... Just use an uh, excess trim piece to set our width and depth of our little notch, just like that. Do it from one direction, turn the thing around, do it from the other direction. You just wind up with this, this little square, pretty poorly drawn there with one hand. But um, I use the miter saw and the coping saw to cut these little notches out. You can just do it all with the coping saw if you want. Then I bring our long dog-eared dog trim piece inside, lay it down, and I run glue all the way across the back upper portion of it like this. And I rub glue into place, type on two with my finger, rub the excess glue onto the edge of our ply shelf. And then I just push it up against the edge of the ply shelf like this. I'm going to do most of this line up by eye. And I often start in the middle. Put, put a single pin in, probably an inch and a quarter brad. And you can just lift and lower the thing and work your way across to the outer edges. You can see our little notch there jumping over the cleats out at the sidewall. A lot of gaps are going to just be hidden by caulk in this case. I uh, finished the upper face frame there, and now I go ahead and do the long lower one. You can tell we're getting good, uh, good tight bond there with the glue beating up out of the seam and work my way all the way across the side to the perimeters. And those are our long face frames there. It's not going to take too long for these that glue to set up, but they're they're securely pinned in place for the moment. Now we need our verticals. So I measure between the two horizontal face frames. Get something like 14 and 3 eighths right here. And then go ahead and measure the bottom as well, pushing down into the pile of the carpet. These are more like 14 and 5 eighths down at the bottom. Cut those two pieces, bring them in, and I test fit them. They're pretty tight. You can you know they're they're almost friction fit right there. Uh, pull it down, spread glue on the center of this piece, wipe it in with my finger, wipe onto the edge of the ply shelf there, and then just stand the thing up in place, push it back until it kind of bumps 
that shelving edge, the divider edge. There you get a little, you're gonna just kind of hide behind the face frame here. The, the feet are gonna, the front of the feet are gonna hide behind the face frame. And when it's lined up by eye, I just go ahead and shoot a couple brads through the face frame into the edge of the divider, just like this. Now I think I, oh, also use your speed square to plumb these up. Get one set. I guess it's easier to start with the upper one. Get that at a good 90 degree angle, shoot it on. And now you can use the upper face frame to line up the lower one because you really want those to line up vertically. Get that one pinned in place with a couple brad nails. And uh, the carpentry portion of this project is done. Everything's looking pretty square and tight. We can move on to some of the finishing techniques here. And uh, I usually start by taking a little sanding pad, something like this, 120 or 180. And anywhere I left some kind of unsightly glue blobs, like you can kind of see I had some drips when I was pre-painting outside. Uh, I, just, I just sand them down lightly, trying to get a, a good finished edge here. And then uh, take some spackle. This is DAP patch and paint. It's really lightweight. That's what it looks like. And I dab a little bit onto my finger and just work it into the nail holes, usually in kind of a little circular pattern. You can do two applications anywhere because it's gonna press in there generally. You can either leave it high, let it dry and sand it down, or just kind of work it in, let it dry, touch sand and do another application, which is usually how I do it. And I'm gonna hit the nail heads in the face frames the same way, just like that. And anywhere that I got like this, this long crack here, usually you can just kind of fill that in with spackle as well. Cracks like that will kind of vanish. This, this pine sort of porous, soft. It will split occasionally, uh, but it's easy to hide. Now I'm going to take some DAP acrylic latex caulk with a really tight cut out at the nib there. Uh, I don't want a big bead. I, I, I leave it maybe just, just over a, somewhere between a sixteenth and an eighth for the hole and run a bead into any seam between two surfaces here. And you just tool it down with your finger, just like that. Slide it out place, take a little excess here. Run from the other direction. And uh, if you have a little excess caulk on your finger, sometimes you can just put it in a hidden seam somewhere. It's not gonna hurt back there, it can only help. Just like that. And uh, occasionally you wanna clean your fingers off. So I tend to keep a wet rag through my belt loop like this. This not only cleans your fingers and gets uh, caulk off of it, it keeps your fingers moist and that actually helps tooling the caulk into place, especially in tricky little areas like that where you got a lot of, a lot of little turns and crevices to fill. And I let that caulk dry up and now we just have to touch up paint. I'm going to do this with a clean inch and a half brush. And I notice I kind of load up the very tip of the brush and I sort of push paint into the seam between the wall and the top of our shelves here, all around the perimeter. And then um, this seam between the face frame and the shelf, I probably give the most attention to because I tend to not caulk this. I see that as excessive. Instead, I usually just put like two or three applications of paint and let that fill any gap uh, between the, the two pieces there. Get a couple coats on everything, including those little feet, the cleats at the sidewall, and everything's looking good. Uh, this just needs time to dry up, but this is pretty much how I finish it. And my client in this case sent me a couple follow-up pictures. I love when they do that. They got the closet filled up with toys and everything's looking really good. So that's how you do some custom lower shelves in a built-in closet here. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching. If you're a pro carpenter, building expert, please comment below, offer advice. This is a learning channel. I learn on every job. I love getting advice down in the comment section. So if you watch the video, just head down there and check it out. And uh, be sure to look out for more videos from The Honest Carpenter. Thanks for watching, everybody.